Good morning, Sage here. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney and this is the Mid-Market Pulse. Let's get started with the Mid-Market Commentary for today and see how the ASX 200 traded by lunchtime. The Australian shares trade higher by Friday afternoon, led by gains in the tech materials and telecom stocks. The market witnessed cautious trading as investors digested US inflation report, which spiked to the highest rate since 2008 as the world's largest economy rebounds strongly from the COVID-19 crisis. The ASX 200 is trading higher by 12.70 points, or 0.17%, to reach 7,315.20. Earlier today, the index opened marginally higher, up just 3.30 points at 7,305.80. Despite the three major Wall Street stock indices closing higher overnight, and over the last five sessions, the index has gained 0.27%. On the sectoral front, eight of the 11 sectors are trading higher, with information technology gaining the most, rising as much as 2%. Other sectors that are trading higher include materials, industrials, consumer, discretionary, utilities, healthcare and telecommunications. Bucking the trend, however, A-REIT is the worst performer on the ASX with 0.54% losses made. It was followed by financials, which is down as well, 0.54%. ASX-listed tech stocks led the market gain, tracking overnight gains in U.S. counterparts. And Aussie tech stocks AXIJ climbed as much as 2.3%, hitting their highest since 4th of May 2021, taking cues from the tech-heavy Nasdaq IXIC that rose 0.78% on Thursday. The buy now, pay later giant Afterpay Limited gained as much as 3.8%, while software maker Altrium Limited added over 2%. Moving on now to the top gainers and losers, AI data provider Appen is the top gainer on the ASX, rising 5.85% to $13.89 Australian. And some other notable gainers are Linus Corporation Limited, Mesoblast Limited, Whitehaven Coal Limited and Zipco Limited, which traded higher between 4 to 5.6%. And meanwhile, Eager's Automotive Limited is the top percentage loser on the ASX, falling 3% to $15.51 Australian. Stockland EML Payments Limited, Reliance Worldwide Corporation and Iris Limited are some of the other notable losers. And now let's take a look at the shares in the news today. The share price of Domino's Pizza Enterprises surges 0.9% to reach $115.08 Australian after Australia's largest pizza chain expanded its global footprint by acquiring Domino's Taiwan. The company has entered into a binding agreement to buy a 100% stake in Pizza Vest Company, the operating entity of Domino's Taiwan from Formosa International Hotels Corporation for 79 million Australian dollars. The transaction, which will be funded from cash and debt facilities, is expected to complete in the first half of financial year 2022, subject to satisfaction of regulatory approvals in Taiwan. And Domino's Taiwan is the second largest pizza chain in Taiwan in terms of store counts and network sales, with store networks of 138 franchise stores and 19 corporate stores located across all major cities. Shares of Sky City Entertainment Group Limited rose 0.9% to reach $3.34 Australian after the company provided its earnings guidance for the financial year 21 on the back of stronger than expected trading. And as a result, the gambling and entertainment company expects earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortisation, or BITNA, in the range of 247 to 253 million Australian dollars, it also anticipates the net profit after tax, or NPAT, between 84 to 88 million Australian dollars. And on that note, we'll take a short break, but please stay watching as I'll be back with more trending market updates after this. New Zealand is unique. And Kalkine TV is here to bring you all the latest news and trending market updates. Streaming across multiple platforms, so no matter where you are, whether it be at the beach or on the farm, you can count on the team here at Kalkine TV to be your home for accessing the latest valuable insights into global issues that are affecting New Zealanders. Subscribe to our channels across YouTube, Facebook, also visit kalkine.co.nz.
warm welcome back. Sage here. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. And if you've just joined us, this is the Mid-Market Pulse. We were taking a look at the ASX listed shares that are making the news today. Next up is the Bulletin Resources Limited shares, who rose 4.28% to 7.3 cents Australian after the company announced that it has initiated a new drilling campaign at Lake Rebecca. And as per the company, an Air Corps drilling program is about to commence at its Lake Rebecca Gold Project, 150 kilometres east-northeast of Kalgoorlie in Western Australia. And the Lake Rebecca Gold Project is immediately along strike of Apollo Consolidated Limited's 1.1 million ounces Rebecca Gold project. Shares of Crown Resorts is next up. They've dropped 1.85% to reach $12.17 Australian after the Victorian government extended time and funding to the Royal Commission that is probing the casino operator. The Royal Commission, which has been handling the CWN case for long now, is Australia's most powerful kind of public inquiry system. It can even compel witnesses. Centuria Industrial REIT is up next. They've declared on Friday that it has secured three high quality industrial assets worth 86.1 million Australian dollars after the settlement of these acquisitions. CIP's portfolio will rise to 66 properties worth more than 3 billion Australian dollars. And as per the ASX announcement, the newly acquired properties are 100% occupied on a portfolio weighted average lease expiry or WALE of five years. Following the announcement, shares of Centuria Industrial rise as well, 0.27% to reach $3.73 Australian. Therapeutic antibody development company Patris Limited has announced that its wholly owned subsidiary Nucleus Therapeutics PTYLTD has received a 6.26 million Australian dollar R&D tax incentive refund for the financial year 20 and the stock PAB traded last at 3.1 cents Australian. Let's now take a look at the Asian markets. The Asian markets traded higher in the opening deals, tracking firm queues from Wall Street, which ended higher overnight. And investors shrugged off US inflation reports that showed a higher than expected rise in price pressures amid the strong economic recovery in the world's largest economy from the COVID-19 crisis. Inflation in the US rose at an annual rate of 5% in May, up from 4.2% in April and the highest since August. 2008 as per the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. Taiwan's weighted index is the best performer in the region, gaining 1.15%. Japan's Nikkei rises 0.13% while Seoul's Kospi trades climbed as well 0.56%. Also, the Straits Times index in Singapore surges 0.30%. However, bucking the trend, the mainland Chinese stock Shanghai Composite drops marginally by 0.03%. In the overnight trade on Thursday, all the three major US index stocks closed higher despite sharp rises in inflation and the market rally was supported by a drop in the jobless claims, which fell by 9,000 to reach 376,000 in the week ended 5th of June. The Dow Jones rose 0.05% to reach 34,466 point two four, while the S&P 500 gained 0.47% to a record high of 4,239.19, surging past its previous all-time high of 4,238.04. The Nasdaq Composite was up 0.78% to 14,020.33, spurred by growth stocks that thrive on the low interest rates. And on that note, we'll take another short break. Please stay watching. I'll be back with more trending market updates after this. At Calkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV.
A warm welcome back, Sage again, and you are watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Mid Market Pulse. Let's now take a look at more ASX listed shares that have made the news today. And we'll also now take a look at the crypto market. The cryptocurrency market retreated in the overnight trade amid concerns about tighter regulations. The global banking regulator, Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, has directed banks to set aside enough capital to cover losses on any Bitcoin holdings, a move which is being seen as a conservative step to prevent wide-scale use of the cryptocurrency by major lenders. And adding to the woes, Iranian government was proposed to create a framework to regulate cryptocurrency currencies to discourage dishonourable crypto businesses. The country has already imposed a blanket ban. Reacting to the news, the price of Bitcoin declined as much as 7.35% in the past 24 hours trade. The world's largest cryptocurrency moved from a high of 38,461 US dollars to hit a low of 35,827 US dollars. Pairing some of the losses, the world's largest cryptocurrency was trading around $36,614, down 1.45% during the mid-market trading. In a similar trend, Ether, the second biggest crypto, trades around $2,452 US dollars, down 5.25% over the previous 24 hours. It has moved in the range of $2,462 to $2,617 US dollars as per Coindesk 20 data. Among others, XRP tumbles 5.8% to 85.57 cents US, while the meme currency Dogecoin falls as well by 4.4% to reach 32.28 cents US. Yesterday, the crypto market witnessed strong rallies after El Salvador officially adopted Bitcoin as a legal tender after Congress gave the nod to the president, Nayib Bukele's proposal to embrace the digital coin in the Central American nation has become the first country in the world to officially adopt Bitcoin as a legal currency. And thanks so much for joining us on that report. That is all for now. And keep watching Calkine TV for more of the latest market live updates. Sage signing off.